listen to yourself. I'm sure you asked the question very jocularly. <laughs> <laughs> because it really doesn't add up. Now, like Festus said, you cited one example of APC people saying they must vote APC in Lagos. We also have tons of videos showing Labour Party scaring away voters Southeast. all over the Southeast. In fact, at our last press conference, yeah, a woman came. A woman came. we showcased a woman, an APC member, a candidate down. for the House of Representatives in Anambra. Yes. Um, in Anambra State, yes. whose house property was burnt down yes. completely by irate labor people. Did you see that in Lagos? Prevented her from exactly. voting, yes. drove her family out, yes. and burnt down her property. Yes. We showcased her at our press conference, and she spoke to the press herself. That in Lagos? Did you ever hear that happening in Lagos? In Lagos? But it happened in, the, in, Anambra, in Anambra State. And all over, and in Ebony. Exactly. In all over, and Imo, yeah. all over the southeastern states. Yes. And now, let us even forget all of that. Because of these preconceived ideas, they refuse to acknowledge the decency and the credibility of the Nigerian presidential election process and result, and went on to write negative reports based on their own prejudices and biases. But the truth of the matter is that whoever sat down to properly and logically analyze not just the results, but the process itself, will discover that this has been, like I said earlier on, the freest and fairest election in Nigeria since 1999. Second only to the June 12 of 1993. And why? Because if Ashiwa Jubala and Metinubu will rig any election, common sense will dictate that charity must begin at home. He should have rigged Lagos for himself. It's not logical to think that you will leave your own bastion and go and rig elsewhere. Now, Lagos has arguably, if not the largest uh, voting population in Nigeria. About 7 million. So, how would any politician leave such a large voting population and then go and rig in a smaller voting population? It does not add up. Now, Bola Metinumbu has held sway in Nigeria's political firmament, particularly in Lagos, in the last 24 years, and has never lost an election in the 23 of the 24 years. But he lost it in this one. And yet you say he has rigged. And he could not successfully rig himself in his own bastion, in his own power base. And the city president lost his own home base of Katsina State. And he could not use the extensive coercive agencies under his command and control to rig his own party into victory in his own home state. Does that add up? And APC sitting governors, at least 10 of them, 10 APC sitting governors lost their home states to the opposition. And you still say the election is flawed. That is the height of illogicality. Gentlemen of the press, nothing could be further from the truth. That's why we say this has been the freest and fairest election since 1999 because he threw up these unthinkable upsets. No other election. Obasanjo, Olusegun Obasanjo, who shouted the election should be cancelled conducted an election as a sitting head of state in 2007. And that has gone down in history as the most flawed, most rigged, most pernicious election in history of Nigeria. In fact, to underscore that point, the beneficiary of that election, the late Umoru Yaradua, 
attested and confirmed and confessed publicly that the election that brought him into power was seriously flawed. And he went on, as a good Democrat and gentleman, to institute measures. He put in measures in place to correct the anomalies that resulted from the election that brought him into power. Yes. And that election, yes. Yes, he, he started the Uwes Commission, initiated that Uwes Commission that looked into the processes of electionary in Nigeria and recommended measures to plug loopholes and leakages. And that election was conducted by this same Obasanjo. And this same Obasanjo went to the U.S. at an interview, which I played the visual at a press conference two weeks ago, and declared emphatically that there is no perfect election anywhere in the world. Yet, he expected our own election here to be perfect because it did not suit his own whim and caprice and his own adopted candidate lost woefully. And in, and, and, and in fact, it is the APC government that has implemented most of the recommendations of the Ways Commission in terms of the electoral law. And that's why you have this new electoral act. Endos and aspersions being cast on the election by organizations such as the Financial Times, Economist, New York Times, amongst others, we made bold to say that the 2023 20, presidential election is the most credible, most free, most fair national election in Nigeria since 1999. And there are empirical verifications to back this up. No election since 1999 had thrown up the upsets that we had witnessed in this last presidential election in Nigeria. Since 1999, no election in this country had thrown up such upsets in hitherto unthinkable areas. The elections into the Senate and House of Representatives were held the same day with the presidential election. They produced an outcome that showed our party winning majority seats in both chambers. None of the presidential candidates assailed the integrity of the National Assembly elections. Similarly, the presidential election produced expected outcome. Anyone who is honest enough and understands the political landscape of Nigeria and the forces at play in electing a president in a multi-ethnic and multi-religious society like Nigeria will know that only Ashiwa Jubola, Metinumbu, and APC could have won the election. It must be stressed that only the APC went into the 2023 election intact. The PDP went into the election fragmented into three parts. In 19, sorry, in 2015, the PDP went into the election of 2015 fragmented and it lost. And so, how logical could it have been for it to expect to now come and win when it lost when it was whole and now fragmented into three, still expecting to have won the election? It was the height of illogicality. 